So, so far we have looked at the epidemiological um, signal like Sharon said, and we've also been looking at the genomic signal comparing different lineages and their growth rates together. And it does appear that B117 is indeed growing faster. What uh, vaccine manufacturers can do is they can actually produce a, uh, like a pseudovirus in, in a test tube, in effect, to see whether uh, immun a neutralization of antibodies can actually neutralize those particular variants. And so uh, there are vaccine manufacturers who are doing this at the moment for uh, the new variants, and they can also see if the new variant is neutralized. So there's recent reports um, uh, from vaccine manufacturers to look at uh, neutralization of the, of the variants that we're worried about, um, including the one that was first detected in South Africa. And we'll see from a, a larger population, you know, if that efficacy will probably be a little bit lower after two shots, and it'll probably be lower after a single shot as well. I think it is important to uh, generate as robust an immune response in vulnerable people, which is even more difficult um, for, for medically vulnerable, for the elderly, their immune response isn't as strong as adults. Luckily, with the vaccines that have been uh, granted authorization, uh, the immune responses seem to be okay. But again, it comes back to that critical question, what is okay to protect? And what is okay to prevent uh, variants emerging? You may have heard about the reproductive number, the R number, um, in the media quite a lot over the last year. And it, it does look like during the lockdown in November, other lineages had their um, R number drop below one, but for B117 it dropped, but it stayed above one. And then of course in December it surged again after the end of the November lockdown. Now that we know, especially with these new platforms, such, well, newer platforms such as mRNA, I mean the key things about clinical trials and before you put a, a vaccine on the market is you need to know it's safe, you need to know it's efficacious and you need to know that it's been produced a high enough quality to give you that safety. And we know that now for the vaccines that are on the market so there's, there's less of a risk of going back in and making a new uh, vaccine to a new antigen. Um, so that has taken away some of the time that's required for it. You, it's likely that we will still have to, it's more than likely that we'll still have to have uh, at least phase, what we call phase one clinical trials to show that this new um, vaccine with the, or new antigen in the vaccine will induce uh, the immune responses that's required against that new variant and also look at safety as well. So natural selection will favour the virus that results in the most onward transmission so therefore, all other things being equal, the virus that keeps a host infected the longest will win out. So if we assume that transmissibility is correlated with virulence, then the more transmissible the virus is, it will kill hosts earlier and therefore have less reproductive success. So then that results in selection for a transmission virulence trade-off. And so that might result in the virus becoming more benign but it doesn't necessarily result in it becoming just less and less um, virulent. This is such a fast moving field uh, that, that what we say changes very quickly. But certainly uh, there, are, there are good systems in place to test variants to see whether they um, uh, are neutralised in the test tube. But it comes back to actually testing that again in real life. So doing the clinical trials, uh, looking at how people uh, respond, whether they're protected uh, from a, a, a infection after having been vaccinated. But this is, this is a huge area of discussion and work at the moment to see whether we need to have an ongoing programme of, of tweaking vaccines uh, and then uh, testing the variants that arise.